Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today I wanted to give you guys my 3.9 League Start character. It is going to be a mind build. I will not be joining in on the bow meta, mainly because I just feel really comfortable playing my mind builds and I can always just play a bow build as another character. So last league I played 3.8 Icicle Mines, was fantastic. I was thinking about doing Icicle Mines again, but it's fun to, you know, do a little bit of a twist. So since Icicle Mines did get a nerf, um, nothing game breaking, but just projectile speed loss, um, I decided I wanted to try out Arc Mines. For people who don't know, Arc had an additional chain range, well, a chain range of 50 back in the day. They nerfed it to 25 and now they buffed it back to 35. So Arc is in a fantastic spot in terms for clearing, all you need to do is fix your single target. So this character that I'm building around is going to be based off of the character that we played before since they didn't really change much on the passive tree and I find this to be one of the really strong archetypes that I made. So just to show you guys uh, in SSF on what we played on, uh, Pox Ice. Just to give you guys a rundown. So this guy at 96 was rocking 5.3k life with 3.1k mana. Um, that's so that's with mind over matter and that's not using a cloak of defiance So I had a pretty sick chess piece, but with a cloak of defiance you can get even more effective life out of it um, So that's something that's really nice. So the character works totally fine at endgame um, It can survive no problem. None of that is an issue at all. Remember for bossing uh, Sab is really good because when you're bossing with saboteur you have the option of getting Pyromaniac, which everyone gets, which is immunity to Ignite and immunity to Shock. And then if you use a Dream Fragments, you also get immunity to Freeze and immunity to Chill. So your main focus is just don't get hit. And to, to match with that, you're also running Silent Steps with Born in the Shadows, which gives 15% reduced damage of all blinded targets. Very good for bosses. Uh, the only time a boss should hit you that when it's not blind is if it goes into an immune phase and then pops out of the immune phase and then hits you before you hit it, but you have an aura, so if you're next to it, it's blinded anyway. Uh, and then of course we've got acrobatics and phase acro, and as for where your life sustain comes from, you get a permanent 15 or 10% life regen per second from Pyromaniac. You also can just run a Catalyst Eternal Life Flask with life recovery, and then of course you grab Herbalism for flask life recovery rate. So it does end up helping quite a bit. With that being said, let's talk about the path of building for the skill tree. So I have done a breakdown for you guys, for the new players. If you look in the skill tree, you'll notice that there is a 1 to 20, 21 to 40, 41 to 60, 61 to 80, 81 through 100, 101 plus, 101 with a Cloak of Defiance because your tree will look different. And then for the new players who have absolutely no fucking clue what they're doing, I have two other trees, a 21 to 40 and a 41 to 60. They are meant to do less damage, however they are much more tanky because they rush Mind Over Matter early game. So, with that being said, let's talk a little bit about the, the breakdown. So, 1 to 20, you can see we're essentially uh, beelining towards Volatile Mines, since Volatile Mines is a very big damage increase. Anytime you can have additional mines placed at a time, you do significantly more single target damage against phase bosses. So, any type of act boss that takes five seconds before it does anything, you can have an extra two mines down. And remember that the way mines work now is each mine has an aura. Even if it's like arc, it's attached with a support called like blast chain. And then that aura is benefited off of multiple mines. Um, so, detonating in sequence always results in more, more single target damage. So you can see pretty much what we've done. I do like to grab Blood Siphon early for the strength requirement, mainly because I really like Steel Skin. Steel Skin is purely based on strength. You also notice that I decided this go around, I think it's better to not level his crit because Arc only has a 5% crit. So I think it's better to scale Ellie damage since most Ellie damage comes with increased effect of non-damaging ailments, which is Shock, which helps with the Shock multiplier. And also Shock was buffed in this patch so it's easier to apply it. However, we're still probably not gonna be doing 50% shocks early game, so this is definitely very de beneficial. So let's look at the next one, 21 to 40. You can see I am now rushing towards uh, Clever Construction. The main reason why is when you are throwing your mines and you're trying to get them to detonate in sequence, you need to have like 10 mines, 11 mines, 12 mines. If a boss uses any type of AOE, I'm gonna use a prime example, Piety likes to use ball lightning. If she shoots a ball lightning, it will blow up every single mine that you have before you detonate. So Clever Construction gives you that five second iframe, which allows you to just chuck a bunch of traps and then actually detonate in sequence. 
So I always recommend rushing this. Again, if you're a new player, the tree is going to take you to a different side and early game you're going to be going towards mind over matter so you just have a larger pool so it's easier for you to react to things so with this we're also going to go ahead and rush that acrobatics also for your first lab point i would recommend grabbing pyromaniac it's going to help with early game mana cost and it's going to give you sustain that you don't have and it's going to give you that immune to ignite and shock getting shocked early game is something that happens all the time because we don't run immunity flasks that early into the game so for 41 to 60 you can see i have put in points in the survivalist the only reason for this is because of the ellie res the evasion doesn't really usually do anything early game because you're just taking whatever you can find the chance to evade attacks is very nice later in the game it's also nice early game but the main reason to take this early is just the sheer amount of resistance it helps gearing a lot um, then from here you can see we are now rushing towards mind over matter I have not allocated any crit nodes with the exception of these three, mainly because success of detonation is huge. It's 100% crit multi, uh, or sorry, crit chance and up to 40 crit multi. Okay, going into the next branch, 61 to 80, you can see we are starting to fill in crit now. Again, if you don't feel comfortable with getting crit, don't get it right now. Uh, you can also see we have worked our way down into Templar, mainly because we don't have any strength and early game. Well, that's not really the reason to go there, but let's just talk about strength. Strength helps a lot in the early game for guard skills that you don't have. And a lot of gear just randomly requires strength. And if you're playing a shadow with 22 strength, you'll never be able to use any red support gems. I do believe we use a lot of increased duration. So getting this strength, which also affects base HP is good. So in Templar, we get... Um, 10 strength here we also get 10 strength here and then we get 20 strength here I thought one of these oh yeah light of divinity is also a good node uh, definitely pick it up I'm not sure why I didn't pick it up I guess because I respect this later but this is for sure a good one pointer moving into the next one 81 to 100 you can see we have now started continuously filling in crit uh, we respect here into crit um, I did grab Silent Steps. You don't need to get this. If Annoying from Blight League is still in the game, which I believe it is, actually 100% it is, and it's still relatively easy to do, I would recommend Anointing Silent Steps, and then that way you can save three skill points. It's a good thing to anoint because you anoint it one time and you get 5% reduced damage taken from blinded enemies, which is all the time because Born in the Shadows blinds anything near you and anything that's not near you gets a 25% chance to get blinded on hit and you're playing a mind build. So you're gonna throw with minefield later, like four or five mines, poof, hit detonate, everything's blinded. That's not even on your screen. So that's definitely super good. And then going into the last one, which is the 101 plus, you can see pretty much everything that we've filled in. I decided to drop this part of Templar um, just because I felt like I didn't have the points. Now, the reason why I dropped from Templar is because I went into power charges and frenzy charges now i know i didn't grab this node right here i just don't have a lot of points on the tree right now so the reason why i went into charges is because of a um a support gem called charge traps charge trap gives you crit multi per power charge and gives you mind throwing speed per frenzy charge when you're at late game the only thing you're going to be doing is constantly throwing mines the more mind throwing speed you can get the better your build is going to feel i repeat the more mind throwing speed you get, the better your build is going to feel. You should not be using minefield early game because it's going to take your guy seven seconds to throw five mines. Not really, but it's going to take a long time to throw mines. And in that early game, a mob could just shield charge you from across the screen and kapow. So I usually don't use minefield until later, which if you look in the skills break down here, you'll see for main skill, uh, I have charge traps and minefield put all the way at the bottom. So if you read charge traps, it says supported skills have 15 crit multi per power charge when used by traps. I'm pretty sure this is not correct because, wait, is there charged mines actually? I'm an idiot. Is charged mines a thing? Charged mines. Oops, a daisy. No problem. All fixed. All fixed. Okay. So charged mines. Here you go. You get... Critical strike chance per power charge additional, and you get, I'm pretty sure, there we go. 10% increased mind throwing speed per frenzy. Easy fix, no problem. Basically the same shit, you just don't get the crit multi. Either way, you want the mind throwing speed very badly. It is very, very, very beneficial for you. A lot of people are also gonna be asking why I don't use um, uh, trap and mind damage. Trap and mind damage is a fantastic support jam. 
but I really don't like the reduced throwing speed. I do use it early game because it's like the best thing I can get because I don't want to use control destruction to lower my crit rate. Um, and sometimes penetration is really wishy-washy because you can get a bunch of like flat cold or if you're using Call the Brotherhood, etc. Anyway, let's go back to this. So you can see also with the 101 plus, I have a respec with Cloak of Defiance. What this does is I ended up dropping a lot of the two point um, like frenzy and power charges, depending on how you decide to play. And I went into jewels. So with this, we basically cut off here. And I know the life looks really, really low, but remember you're getting one jewel, two jewels, three jewels, four jewels, did I count five? Yeah, one, two, three, four, five. And that's more of an end game respec because if you're playing SSF like me, you're not gonna have these jewels early and you're probably not gonna have a Cloak of Defiance early. You may not ever find a Cloak of Defiance. So that pretty much covers the skill tree progression of the character. Uh, just to drop that and show you the 21 to 40, you can see we rush Mind Over Matter and grab Discipline and Training and the Ellie Res at Holy Dominion. And then 41 to 60, you can see we grab like the life. And now we start aiming to go back towards Clever Construction over here. Okay, now I want to talk about the skills and pretty much what I'm running. So for the most part, I copied the skills from the other build I just showed you because they're going to use the exact same thing. Um, so for example, for my auras, I'm gonna be running Clarity, Precision, and Enlighten. Clarity, because we need mono regen. Precision, because level one precision gives you 40 crit rate for literally no mana. You should use it in almost every single build you play. Even in an elemental overload build, you use precision to help you proc elemental overload. Um, then for our mobility here, we've got Smoke Mine with increased duration, Flame Dash, Arcane Surge. Smoke Mine does not proc Arcane Surge, but Flame Dash procs Arcane Surge. Uh, I've got a Casting Damage Taken set up. The levels of the cast and damage taken are going to be based on how much strength you have. So whatever strength you can put to get steel skin is where you stop it. So if you can only get a level 52 skill skin, then don't let your cast and damage taken go past level 52. And then I've got the increased duration and we've got our vol skill in here. And then I've got pyroclasm mine, which is going to go on our helmet. Um, well, it doesn't really matter where any of these go right now because you've got space for everything. Um, but Pyroclasm Mine is what we're going to be using early game. I do want to test out Ball Lightning, but I don't know when I'm going to test it out. Pyroclasm Mine is very strong, super strong. Um, I was running, doing like a quick little play test with white weapons while leveling, and Pyroclasm still insta-deletes bosses. So I've just got Pyro, Trap in Mind, Control Destruction, Inspiration. Feel free to toy around with whatever links you decide to use, but this is what I found to be pretty good. Um, and then... That's pretty much it for there. For main skill again, it's you're gonna have arc, high impact slash, I don't remember, so this one is chance to deal double damage. There's another one called blast, blast something, blast chain. Blast chain does 5% uh, more per mine. I'm probably gonna use blast chain, uh, but that's definitely something to use. Then there's lightning pen, which is probably not what you're gonna use, but you can replace this with trap and mine damage. Uh, so there's like many options as well. Inspiration is very good in general because it gives you crit and more Ellie. In my opinion, Inspiration is a better control destruction even though it got nerfed. So that's really nice. Charge Mines, uh, which go in conjunction with Minefield. I don't use Minefield without Charge Mine and I don't use Charge Mine without Minefield. So that's kind of just me. So if I had a five link, I'd probably remove Lightning Pen to get Charge Mines and Minefield. But again, when I play it, I'll let you know what I feel is personally better for me. So to go over the items, uh, I don't really like this part of Path of Building. If any of you guys know me who have been watching my content for a while, I like theory crafting my skill tree, and not really my items. I like kind of learning this part on my own. So what I'll go ahead and do is after day one and day two, I will just upload my character and import it so it will have real gear that you can look at. But for now, all I did is just show you gear that you're kind of going to be looking towards. So if I look at the weapon as an example, you don't want a cast speed implicit weapon because it doesn't help. You can use a mace for Ellie Pen. That's very good. So I'm just using Prophecy Wands that give uh, essentially, and don't mind the int requirement, you can always you can always move stuff around. Like we have 220 int, so you just need 30 int, you can use this. But anyway, so you've got like 64 spell damage, you've got like a lightning affix you can get. Lightning to spells is good. Cold to spells is really good, so you can freeze and chill. Um, crit chance is good, crit multi is good, and plus one to level of lightning spell gems is king. That's why I said I wanted to potentially try out ball lightning, because if I'm dual wielding with plus one lightning, then 
Unfortunately, it's not really going to work out very well when it comes to um, using Pyroclasm for single target because they kind of conflict. But Pyroclasm is also really strong, so it may not even matter. Uh, then for a Lion Pelt, I just have Random Life to just show you what the life basically is. This is really squishy, but this is the 5 Jewel one, so, you know, uh, actually it's not the 5 Jewel one. Anyway, don't worry about it. Um, just more pretty much life and resistance across the board. Like I said, I, I'll update this when I actually make the character. So as for some uniques to game for early, you've got like Cloak of Defiance, which is pretty RNG to drop, but there is a really good idea, which is a Honor Home Helm. I ended up using an Honor Home until I got a six link on my Icicle Miner because it gives plus two socket gems, which is a five link. So you have a four link plus two, which makes a five link which is really nice. So you basically sacrifice helmet or uh, life on your helmet and resistance on your helmet, but you have like a budget tabula rasa. Uh, the only reason why I say that is because a lot of times you do so much damage anyway, you don't need to sacrifice an entire chess piece just to clear like low tier content. From there, I want to go into the notes tab. So in here, I basically talked about everything I just talked about, but if you don't want to watch the video, then I would recommend looking at this. Um, you're probably not going to see this because, you know, um, yeah. But anyway, down here, I have the character that I showed you guys before, which I'm basing it around, which is the Icicle Miner. Um, and then this is the pace spin for the Icicle Miner, I believe. And then this is the YouTube video. Worst case scenario, you can just look at my character or profile and just pull out the level 96 Icicle Mine character. Other than that, that's pretty much about it. As for my bandit, you can see here at the top, I will be helping Alira. Um, that pretty much covers everything that I've done. Um, I can't really show you too much gameplay, but I can attempt to show you some. I, I have this character really low level, so it's gonna look garbage, but you know, just to show you guys with literally nothing. Where is it? SF Hardcore, I think, yeah. I'll just do this. And window capture, this should, there we go. I didn't like Tremor Rod when I used it, but in the end, you should try whatever you want to use. I think the main reason I didn't like Tremor Rod is because it would fuck up with Smoke Mine, but I think they changed that. Okay, so this is just literally Trap and Mine, Blast Chain, and Arc in a white weapon with another white weapon, and then I have Pyro Class with Assembly, and I'm running Double Herald. Now, if I was using Arcane Surge, that would be a lot more damage. If I had any form of plus one Lightning Gem, it would be a lot more damage. If I had uh, weapons that weren't white, it would be a lot more damage. If I had Conductivity, it would be a lot more damage. There's a lot of things you can you can do, but I'm saying like even with the barebone nothing, the build still for leveling will not be a problem at all. No, this is actually with nerfed, this is with nerfed arc range. This is only, this is like baby arc range. So I want to explain Clever Construction right now. So watch what I'm doing here. He's going to charge me. That's what Clever Construction does, is it allows you to basically preemptively place the mines. And even if a target were to AOE there or charge there, you have five seconds where you can still do whatever you want because your mines aren't vulnerable. So preemptively understanding where bosses are going to go really makes proper use of Clever Construction. Okay, so that pretty much covers it. I hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Like I said, I will post daily updates slash bi-daily updates. Um, most likely you will see an update literally like 12 hours to 24 hours off the first day uh, and you'll see exactly where I'm at. And then I'll post some more content to you guys about 3.9. So that's pretty much about it. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Remember, if you liked the video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And remember, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. Take care. Have a wonderful time, everybody.